Hi, and welcome to Watch It Played. My name is Rodney Smith, and in this video, we're going to learn the one to six player Pie in the Sky expansion for My Little Scythe, designed by Hobie and Vienna Chow, and published by Stonemeyer Games, who helped sponsor this video. After disappearing all those years ago, the Animal Kingdom airship has become little more than a fable, but that fable is becoming reality. Now that that long lost airship has emerged from the clouds, piloted by the seekers of the Owl and Fox Kingdoms, who are coming to participate in the next Harvest Tournament. Pie in the Sky is an expansion for My Little Scythe, which we have a tutorial for, and you'll find that linked in the description below, so be sure to check that out first. But when you're ready, join me at the table, and let's learn how to play this expansion. Before we get started, one quick note. If you have one of the first printings of the expansion, you should also have received an update pack of items that had to be sent separately. If you didn't get yours, fill out the replacement form linked in the description of this video. And if you have a later printing, then these will already be in the box. To set up to play, you'll follow all the normal instructions, but be sure to shuffle the two new quest cards into the quest deck. Also shuffle the two new move and two new make power-up tiles into their related stacks. This expansion comes with two new factions, the Owls and Foxes, and all of their necessary pieces which we'll use in our examples during this video. Each player is then assigned one of these airship mats, and there are two different ways that you can do this. The expansion comes with one for each faction, so you could assign the mat to its matching animal kingdom, or you can mix all of the mats together and assign them randomly, but either way, the mat is then placed to the left of the regular mat. These will show an airship ability, and some will make use of an included gadget token. If so, place the related one on your mat. The expansion also includes a fifth trophy token for every animal kingdom, so take yours and put it on the extra spot found here on your airship map. Then claim one of these six identical seek action cards and put it on your player map here, returning any unused ones back to the box. Depending on which printing of this expansion you have, your seek card will either say Pi Courier here at the top or with air support. But both cards work exactly the same, so this makes no difference to the gameplay. Now set this airship die with the other dice, and assemble and place the airship miniature on the portal space closest to the base camp of the player who is last in the turn order. And that's the setup! The Pie in the Sky expansion for My Little Scythe keeps many of the original rules of the game, but adds a few new things to consider that we'll go over. Now one of the biggest changes is that the end of the game will now be triggered once a player has claimed their fifth trophy instead of just four. The other big change, of course, is that we now have an airship to use. This is called the Airship Kai, and this may be commanded by any player. It is a shared unit that anyone can use on their turn. So with that in mind, let's go back to the table and see how this works. The main time the airship will come into play is when you perform a seek action, which will provide you with one of these two options, known as air support. Both will involve rolling this airship die, which is shown here, along with the other dice related to that space. The original dice work just as usual, but this new die has its own rules. It has a six, known as a boost, on two of its sides, and a trophy on the other four. If you roll the six, you can move the airship up to six spaces. If you roll a trophy, you can move up to the number of remaining trophies on your play mats. So in this case, you could move five spaces. But if the play mat looked like this, you could only move three. The real catch is that you may only move the airship if it ends on a space containing an apple or a gem. If you're unable to reach a space with at least one gem or apple, then you may not move the airship or use its air support ability. The exception is if you start on a space already containing an item. Because you are allowed to move zero spaces, stay there, and use the air support on that spot. Just keep in mind the airship only moves as part of the seek action. It cannot be moved as part of a regular move, unless you have a power-up that says otherwise, like this air transport. Now let's go over some other general rules related to the airship's movement. For one, it moves above the board, and that means it's not required to stop if it enters a space with other seekers. Also, when moving the airship, it may never enter a base camp or a castle Everfree but it can enter a portal space. 
It just can't teleport through them to another portal. As well, a space is not considered occupied if it just contains the airship, but no seekers. Additionally, the airship cannot relocate apples and gems to new spaces, pulling them along as it moves. It also can't start pie fights or defend in them. And unlike a seeker, it cannot pick up or resolve quests on its own, unless, again, you have some ability that allows you to do that. That said, once the airship stops on a space with an apple or a gem, you may use its air support ability for one of two possible actions. One option is to retrieve an apple or gem from the airship space and put it into your cargo hold, which is this area of your airship mat. There is no limit to the number of items you can store here, and you have access to all the items in your cargo anytime you need them. In other words, if you were satisfying a quest using your seeker and needed to pay a certain amount of apples or gems, you could take those from your cargo even though your airship isn't anywhere near your figure. And there's no limit to the number of apples or gems you can spend from your cargo at once when paying the cost, either on a quest or when you're making a delivery. As I was saying though, after using the seek action to move the airship, you can add a single apple or gem from its space into your cargo. However, if it came from a space with an opponent seeker, then you took it from them and you lose two friendship. After moving, instead of taking an apple or gem, you can choose to perform your unique airship ability. Just follow its instructions printed here on your airship mat. Some will show one of the five gadget tokens that come in the game, and if so, their effect may put it on the board where it will stay, providing its benefit there until it's moved during a later seek action. Just note that only one gadget may be added to a space, so for example, this other one could not be put here. Also, aside from during the solo mode of the game, these tokens will never come back to your ship. With the new seeker action understood, now let's talk about some of the other ways that the airship can be used. I mentioned that the airship can never enter Castle Everfree in the center of the board, but your seekers can still go there to make deliveries as usual. But don't forget, you always have access to the apples and gems you have stored in your cargo, so in making a delivery, even if the airship isn't anywhere nearby, you can still use the contents of your cargo in that delivery. Otherwise, the rest of the game is played the same, except that the end of the game will now be triggered when someone earns five trophies instead of just four. Then you score the game as usual. But if you're required to go to the second tiebreaker for having the most resources, don't forget to include the apples and gems in your cargo hold. The expansion also comes with an achievement sheet, giving you new challenges to attempt as you play, and you'll find rules for a solo mode as well. But these I'll leave for you to discover on your own. And that's how you play the Pie in the Sky expansion for My Little Scythe. If you have any questions about anything you saw here, feel free to put them in the comments below and I'll gladly answer them as soon as I get a chance. You'll also find forums for discussion, pictures, other videos, and lots more over on the games page at BoardGameGeek, and I'll put a link to that in the description below. And if you found this video helpful, please consider giving it a like, subscribing, and clicking that little bell icon so you get notification anytime we post a new video. But until next time, thanks for watching.